Hey, this is Kevin. I have a 2018 Honda Fit Sport. I wanna go over some of the modifications that I have. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the suspension, tires, uh, as well as engine mods and some other small stuff. Uh, the first mod I did was the Progress for Sway Bar. It bolts up to the beam. It's easy to install, it's not that expensive. It's a great way to improve handling for not a whole lot of money in these cars, so thumbs up on that. For the suspension, I went from stock to HFP to redshift suspension. So stock suspension, not great for autocross, not great for track days. It's really just too soft is what it comes down to. The spring rates are not enough to handle putting the grippy tires underneath them. And it's fine if you wanna carve some back roads, but if you're getting into like autocross or track racing, you're really trying to cut time down. The stock suspension is working against you in every way. I upgraded to the HFP suspension, which was a great in-between suspension. It has a little bit higher spring rates and better dampening, so my car handles a lot better. You'll notice immediately when you chuck it through the turns, the rotation of the rear is greatly improved over stock. So the HFP is an improvement over stock if you just want a little bit of lowering and make the car handle a little bit better, but it still rides comfortable on the street. HFP is the way to go, super easy to install definitely recommend. Uh, after that, I went up to the Redshift suspension, which is a competition-oriented setup. So it's not designed for the street. It's designed to go faster at autocross on the track. It's digressive valving, huge improvement in handling. Uh, you choose your own spring rates. I did 8K front, 8K rear. I probably should have done a little bit stiffer in the rear. Fits like a little bit more spring rate in the back and more stiffness to make them rotate. It's really fine the way it is. I can tune in some rotation on the rear pretty easily. It's still a lot faster than the HFP suspension. Um, the other thing I have is PowerFlex bushings. Uh, they're polyurethane. They go in the lower control arm. They stop wheel hop or they help reduce wheel hop. Um, when you're you know, dropping the clutch at the start of an autocross course, they help reduce the wheels from hopping all over the place and you get that like violent shaking when you're trying to accelerate. So next on to alignment. Uh, the first thing you want to do if you're going to autocross one of these cars is try to get some negative front camber. It'll help handling to help the front dig in more and keep you from going too deep into the camber curve and getting positive camber but uh, it'll also help tire wear which in the long run is going to save you a lot of money. Like those $20 camber bolts they're gonna pay for themselves when it comes to tire wear. So one of the first things you should do. I have four camber bolts in the front. Uh, the alignment shop was able to get me minus 2.9 camber. Optimally, I should have minus 3.5 or more. Minus 2.9 is better than zero. I still don't have quite enough camber. Uh, I'll show you the tire wear on my tires. You can kind of see the diagonal wear. Uh, in the rear beam, I have the SBC shims. Uh, which allows you to choose which shim you want to adjust the toe and camber in the rear. I just did toe. Uh, I had a little bit of toe in from the factory, like most of these cars do. Uh, the shims put me to a square toe. Um, I didn't feel a huge difference. I don't have any data to back up that that was an improvement, but I did it on the advice of the internet, so it's done. Next on to tires, I have Falcon RT660s. Uh, 225s in the front, 205s in the rear. It's a 200 treadwear tire. It has a lot of grip, one of the competitive tires right now. So it's not too expensive. That's definitely a good tire. I don't regret uh, getting those. The reason for 225 front, 205 rear is to get as much grip in the front as possible. Uh, in the rear, uh, saving weight and actually having a little bit less grip is generally better to help the car rotate. 15 by 7.5 front wheels, 15 by 6.5 rear, Rota Slipstreams. The fronts are Conigs, I forget the name of the actual wheel, uh, Hexaform, I think. Uh, engine modifications, I have an HPS cold air intake and I have K-Tuner with their regular map. I actually took it to a tuner to see if he could pull some extra power with some custom tuning um, over their base map and he wasn't able to do it. So if all you have is an intake, just keep the regular K-Tuner tune on there. On 93 octane, I dynoed it at 119 horsepower. The main reason for getting the intake is being able to hear the engine uh, while I'm driving. When you're on an autocross course, you don't have time to look down at the tachometer. You're going off of the sound of the engine, or at least I am, uh, to know that if I'm near the red line or where I am speed-wise, hearing the engine sound is 
how I'm getting that information as I'm driving. So the intake, maybe it adds a couple horsepower, but the main reason is for the sound and being able to hear the engine. Um, the other engine mod that I have is the Hasport rear engine mount. I have the 62A version. Um, that's something that helps a little bit with wheel hop and it helps with the engine to like not move as much. So the other thing is the interior. I have some aesthetic things, like I have the Buddy Club steering wheel, which is fine, it looks nice. Um, have an S2000 shift knob. But most important about the interior is the seat. The stock seat is actually fine for autocross. In autocross, you pretty much go to second gear and you stay there. So you have two hands on the wheel. I never noticed the seat being much of a problem in autocross. When I went to track days is when I really noticed because I would be going around a turn uh, and I need to like, I don't know, I need to like shift to fourth or go down to third or something. As soon as I take one hand off the wheel to reach down here for the shifter, I would just slide so much and I didn't realize how much having the two hands on the wheel was like holding me in place in the seat. That's when the weakness of the stock seat really starts to come out. Um, so I have a Sparco R100 seat. I uh, haven't put it in the car yet. That's still on the to-do list. So for brakes, um, I have G-Lock R8 brakes with centric rotors. It's a good pad, it has good modulation for autocross. It has a lot of stopping power at the track. Uh, before that, I had the StopTech 309 sport pads, which were fine. They did fade a little bit, but it was like a gradual fall off, so it wasn't dangerous or anything. Um, those pads were fine. Uh, if you're just doing autocross, brake pads are not important. Honestly, just rock the stock pads. The only reason to upgrade the brakes in this car is to be able to handle heat if you're going to the track um, and you're doing repeated braking zones, you're hot lapping, and you're gonna want like better fluid so that the fluid doesn't boil. So my overall thoughts for setting this car up, spring rate is probably one of the most important things. If you're on 200 treadwear tires, which most people are if they're serious about doing uh, autocross or track, you need a lot more spring rate than is offered by stock, HFP, or any of the lowering spring companies, or really any off the shelf brand. The spring rates are just not enough to have a really good setup to get the most out of the car. A lot of fast guys are doing like 10K or 12K springs. Engine modifications basically don't matter in this car. That hurts some people's feelings, but it's just true. Like you're not making enough of a difference. If you do, if you spend a thousand dollars and do full bolt-ons, you could, that money is better spent, uh, suspension, tires, tons of other things. So yeah, that's where I am with the car right now. Um, if you have any questions, you can post it in the comments. Um, I'm probably gonna do some more fit videos soon. That's it.